What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So on today's video, we're talking about uh, building a nice sturdy workshop table for all kinds of projects. I've made mine at about 44 inches high, so I can just stand at it here. And I'm going to use mine as a review table a workshop table in the future. If you'd like to see exactly how I build it, well, you gotta stay tuned. All right guys, let's get down to the real reason why we're here. So I had originally found this butcher block top in the trash. So what I did was I wanted to leave a little bit of patina on this. So I took 60 grit sandpaper and then 120 and then 220 around this. So I used the Milwaukee M18 uh, five inch orbital sander. I really like this tool. It is pretty awesome for what it is. So. Um, the entire project was done on one battery, so I used the XC 5.0 battery for this. And uh, after all that sanding, I still had one bar, which was pretty darn impressive. So I did the entire sanding on this project all in that one battery. So after sanding it, I went ahead and applied an Espresso wood stain. Uh, this product is from Varathane. I really enjoy Varathane's products. Uh, they are by no means a sponsor. I mean, if somebody wants to hit me up, um, Varathane is some good stuff. I originally fell in love with their spar varnish uh, for outdoor furniture and things like that around the Durban compound. Um, and then I got into their wood stains and I'm just impressed. So I really love their wood stain. I rag apply this stuff and just wipe the ex excess as I go. And it turns out really, really well. So I really haven't had a bad experience with their wood stains. Um, I end up doing this entire uh, butcher block top uh, with two coats. Uh, I let it dry for four hours in between coats and it turned out really well. I love how the grains come out in the different butcher block and just how the grains turned opposite ways. Butcher block is just one of my favorite things to have. So I went ahead and made the legs in this project out of white wood. This is white wood four x four from Menards. Uh, it turned out very well. I think each four x four was about $9 for an eight foot board. So very, very, uh, you know, cheap and very nice for this project. So I was going to plan on staining it. So, you know, it just worked out for what I needed. So I am going to include uh, plans to this project with all of the measurements necessary, a step-by-step -step, uh, with everything you need to know about building one of these tables. I'm going to put it on the DurbanCompound.com where you can buy the PDF plans to make this table. And I'll show you exactly where you vary uh, your measurements so that you have the proper dimensions, whether uh, you want it at 44 inches or 42 inches or however high you want it, whether you want to do it with casters or not, I will show you all the things you need to be successful. So you can go on over to the website. There's a link in the description below. I used eight inch lags. Uh, these are three eighths lags. I used these to put in the corner gussets uh, and they worked awesome. I had originally thought about going with GRK fasteners, but when I had the lags just laying around collecting dust, I thought this is an absolutely awesome project to do them with. So I used three inch hard plastic casters for this project. And you know, these casters are rated at 110 pounds a piece. So plenty of uh, flexibility with exactly what I wanna do with these casters. So they worked out really well. These are four swivel casters that I got from Menards. They only cost me 10 bucks um, and they worked out great. So here we're gonna flip over the butcher block, which the butcher block just weighs a ton. Um, it's just so heavy. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the legs on uh, and you know, this is where it kind of differs between your project on exactly what you want to do or how big your table is. Um, your measurements are going to vary on exactly what you want. But I went ahead and measured it out 
and then put my uh, corner gussets in, uh, you know, 45, and then attached the top with my GRK 4 inch screws. So here I put the the uh, angle bracket in here, the 45 piece, I put it in at, uh, you know, with my GRK 4 inch screws and they held awesome. So another uh, addition to that, if you wanted to, you could put a cross beam across here uh, between the two legs. I didn't feel it was necessary because I won't be moving it very far, but that is a possibility for you if you would like. So I'll explain that in the detailed instructions. So the, the legs I went ahead and stained with a gray gel stain. This is from General Finishes. This is an oil-based stain. Um, I rag applied this as well. Now the really cool thing about gel stain is that its flexibility is amazing. So it, it's really, really thick. So you can put it on thick or you can put it on thin. Um, if you wipe it more and you wipe the excess off, you can get that real weathered look. So you see how I just wiped it more and I turned it into a very weathered look. If you put it on nice and thick, you can make it basically gray, like as if you were just painting it. You see that there where you can cover up exactly, you know, to what extent that you want, or you can weather it to what you want. That's why I love gel stain. So after getting the gel stain done, uh, I go ahead and turn the entire thing over. And then this is where I go ahead and do a brush apply for the nooks and crannies. So of course, with a, you know, a rag applying of any stain, you have, you know, some, you have to have reasonable expectations of what you can get the stain in or the little cracks and crannies and just all of the things. So I went ahead and took a two inch brush and just touched up my job and made it look awesome. So it takes a little time, but you know, it only took me an afternoon to build this table and it came out awesome. So I couldn't be happier with how it came out. It just looks sweet. So I hope you guys think the same as I do. It is just incredible. So we'll roll in some shots here of what it looks like in the garage. Uh, it is a perfect addition to my garage, a perfect addition to my YouTube studio. I will be doing a lot of YouTube reviews right here. Um, of course, depending on exactly what you're using your bench for uh, is what level you're going to have it at. I wanted to stand here and stand up straight and be able to put my arms on the table and talk to you guys on the camera. That's what was important to me. So if in your project you want to do something different, that's entirely up to you. I will show you all the things that you need to be successful in my plans if you want to buy them. So I hope that you found value in my content today. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into. If you haven't clicked subscribed already and you're not following along on the channel, well, you're missing out. So click that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video.